Hey everybody, Playtendo Guy here, and I'm back with another video. And today I'm bringing you my latest video game pickups for the past couple of months. Quite a lot of sales been going on, of course, with Black Friday, and um, I've been decided to stock up on a lot of games that I've missed out on, and have also been heavily reduced. So there's a lot to get through. So without further ado, let's get into it. So hi everybody, hope you're doing well and keeping safe and thank you for joining me for another video. Today's going to be something a little bit different. Instead of like bundling games with a Blu-ray and 4K pickup, I'm going to do a separate uh, video game pickups video where I'll go through everything that I've picked up in the past couple of months or so. As I said in the intro, there's been a lot of stuff uh, come out recently, a lot of stuff produced as well. And with the Black Friday sale going on, there's been some absolute bargains on some great games. So there's a lot here, a lot to get through, so more than enough waffling. Let's dive right into things and let's go straight into the Switch games. And we do have quite a few here. First up is Pikmin 1 and 2. I uh, really enjoyed the original Pikmin games back on the GameCube. Played them on the Wii actually, and now they're finally available on the Switch. So I do have Pikmin 1, 2 and 3. I do need to pick up Pikmin 4 sometime in the future. But it's great to have both the games here all on one cartridge. They are really wonderful little uh, strategy games with a lot of charm and quite brutal difficulty. So that is Pikmin 1 and 2. Here's a quite an underrated one from the year, and that's Disney Illusion Island. Yes, uh, Mickey Mouse and Friends uh, in a platform and adventure similar to Mario. Yeah, it, it's actually really quite good. It's got a lot of charm to it, and it's got a wonderful art style, very reminiscent of Rayman Origins, Rayman Legends. And whilst it isn't very difficult, and there isn't really much combat to it, it's a fun Metroidvania style platformer with a lot of charm. It's quite a cheap little game, you can pick it up for about 20 quid now, and it's hardly worth giving it a go. There's a lot of enjoyment to be had here, and it is all fully voice acted as well. So that is Disney Illusion Island. Next up is a game that I've been wanting to get since it came out, but because it came out in such a packed week, and it was very expensive for what it was, I decided to wait until Black Friday, and yeah, pretty much it did drop down to 30 quid, and that's the new Sonic game, Sonic Superstars. Um... Yeah, really enjoying this one. It doesn't really reinvent the wheel. It's another Sonic platformer with modern graphics. And it plays a solid game of Sonic it does. Uh, some of the levels are really cool. Um, it doesn't feel super fast. But there is some pretty cool level designs here. Really good music. And you can play as all the characters here as well as a few other extra ones. The game's not the longest. And the boss battles are a bit of a pain in the backside. But overall, it's a solid fun time. Not worth paying 50 quid for, but if you can get it for the 25 to 30 pound mark, then definitely go ahead. Not as good as Sonic Frontiers, but still a lot of fun, nevertheless. So that's Sonic Superstars. Next up is a remake of one of the most beloved SNES games of all time, and it's a game that many people have been crying out for for quite a few years now, and it's a remake of Super Mario RPG. And I've been playing this for a few hours now, and it is a wonderful little game. Uh, the Mario and Luigi series definitely ended up, this ended up paving the way for that, but this has got some wonderful art uh, graphics in it. It definitely feels like toys coming to life, and definitely one of the best looking Switch games out there. Funny dialogue, really faithful remake, having a lot of fun with it, and cannot wait to dive into a little bit more to it. So that is Super Mario RPG. Now this one, I don't know why I picked this one up. It was, it was in B&M of all places, and it was a tenner. This one's now gone to a code in a box format, so you can't buy it as a cartridge anymore. It's pretty much out of print. But this one was the cartridge, cartridge edition, so I thought, you know what, I'll pick it up and see what it's like. And you know what, it isn't great. It's fun to play like with family and friends, but yeah, it's not great. Who wants to be a millionaire? Yeah, this, 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 this isn't great. Yeah, not great at all. The questions repeat themselves very quickly. I played two or three games and the questions were already repeating themselves. There's some fun questions here based on pop culture and video games and movies. 
but again, a lot of questions repeat themselves. Apparently there's 3,000 questions, it doesn't feel like it so far. There's apparently DLC with more questions, but they can jog on if they think I'm going to pick that up. The presentation here is pretty diabolical, and the graphics and the voice acting is so great, and I have to mute all the characters, so that's fine. Next up is uh, a beloved game that I've never actually played. I've played the sequel, which is actually a prequel, and I absolutely adored it. And I've played this one for quite a few hours, and it is definitely very good. And it's a wonder on the Switch, and that's Red Dead Redemption. This one did pick up some controversy when it came out, because it was like a full price game, and for a very slim remaster. But as for someone who hasn't played it, the game before, I was more than happy to pick it up, especially in a physical edition. This one includes the base game as well as the incredible Undead Nightmare, which a lot of people really do highly regard as one of the best bits of DLC ever. Really enjoying this Western epic and cannot wait to see how it unfolds. Here's the game that I'm probably playing currently. Here's the game that I'm currently playing now on my Switch, and it's absolutely wonderful. And it is Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Wow. Uh, yeah, Nintendo does it again. It's a truly wonderful, pardon the pun, platformer with some really good ideas, beautiful graphics, and addictive gameplay. It's up there as one of the best games of the year for me. I love it. Such a great time. Highly recommend it if you haven't picked it up. It is the perfect game to get somebody for the Christmas period who has a Switch. And the final Switch game is a collection of uh, games that I do really like. I was going to get it on PlayStation, but I thought I'd get it on Switch for the portability. It's not the greatest port, and I've heard it's not the greatest port on PS5 either, but I'm having a decent time with it, reliving some good memories, and that's the Metal Gear Solid uh, Collection Volume 1. It includes Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3, as well as a few little extra tidbits as well. Um, the ports of them are very basic indeed, nothing really special, it doesn't really use the Switch to its full potential, but it's great to see these games on different hardware, because they've been lost to time a bit, but now at least they're on the Switch and other formats. I'm having a good time with them, Metal Gear Solid 3 is still my favourite, but it's nice to try out the first one, because I haven't played that one in years. So that is the Metal Gear Solid Collection. Next up is the PS4 game. I picked this one up from B&M as well. It's 10 quid. I've always wanted to play this one. And unfortunately, it isn't the PS5 version. But you do get a free PS5 update with it. So it's not too bad. And that's Biomutant. It's an open world action RPG. I've heard it's not the greatest game. But it's supposed to be quite a solid little time. And sometimes these games can be just as enjoyable as those big budget games. And they're more creative and have a lot of charm to them. So... I'm looking forward to giving this one a go later on down the line. Now it's time for the PS5 stuff. And this one was a game that came out at the start of the year. It was a full 70 quid. 70 quid and it had really middling reviews. But it looked like a solid and fun time with some amazing graphics. But I picked it up in a Black Friday sale from Amazon for a tenner. And that's full spoken. It's about this girl who gets this magical armband and she goes to this weird... Um, fantasy world and has to fight all these really cre odd creatures to save uh, th this land. Uh, for originality it's not going to win anything but it looks like a fun time. It looks very visceral with its combat and some really cool uh, particle effects and really looks like it's going to push the PS5 to its limits. It's one of the first PS5 games to be announced so I'll be intrigued to see what it's like. I'm not expecting amazing things but it could be a pretty solid time. Next up is another game that hit the sales recently. Again, 60, 70 quid went down to 13 quid. So I reserved this one and picked this up from game pretty much straight away. And that's Lego 2K Drive. Um, didn't really have much thought for this one when it came out. It looked fun, but I was never going to pay 70 quid for it. I do like the Lego games and I do like arcade races. But for 13 quid, couldn't say no. It's a fun little game. Nothing spectacular, but it's still a solid time. Uses the Lego IP in some pretty fun ways, but there's a lot of microtransactions in it, which is no surprise as it's 2K. But it's a pretty darn fun time. Uses, um, the graphics look really nice as well, and 
It kind of reminds me a bit of Sonic and Sega All Stars Race and Transform, which is no bad thing. And this game is actually now going to be on PlayStation Plus for December 2023. So if you haven't picked up yourself, don't worry. It'll be available to download with your PlayStation Plus next month. Next up is a game that went down pretty cheap in the sale. And I thought, you know what? Let's give it a shot. I've checked out the trailers. I've seen the trailers. It looks ridiculous. And the gameplay looks a lot of fun. It looks like GTA, but with goats. Yes. Goat Simulator 3 pre-order edition. What am I doing with my life? But yeah. I've heard from a lot of people that it... This is actually a really, really fun game that takes a bit of a mick out of the video game industry whilst also being a fun game. And sometimes you don't need epic sprawling stories and uh, captivating gameplay. You just need a fun time. And Go Simulator 3 looks looks like it. Um, is it going to be amazing? Probably not. But I'm, I'm quite pumped to check this one out. So that's Go Simulator 3. Next up is a kart racing game. There's many kart racing games on the PS5. If you don't have any Mario Kart games on there, many of them to be fair. But I did see this one and this was reduced to about 7 or 8 quid on the Amazon Black Friday sale. And it contains a load of memorable characters like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Garfield and Spongebob. Nickelodeon Kart Racers 3, Slow and Speed Away. I checked out the reviews for this and you know what, apparently it's not too bad. Contains a lot of uh, Nickelodeon characters from past and present stuff. Guys like Ren and Stimpy, the Rugrats, Invader Zim. There's a lot of um, nostalgia there with those characters as I remember them from when I was a kid. Um, again, not expecting amazing things, but for 7 8 quid, looks like it's going to be a pretty good fun time. So that's Nickelodeon Kart Racer 3. Next up is the big game that came out last month, and I did fully platinum it and completed it. And whilst I don't think it's as good as the first one, I do think it's a very enjoyable uh, game that looks outstanding on the PS5, and that's Spider-Man 2. What a brilliant game. Definitely um, the best PlayStation 5 exclusive of the, of the year. I think it's the only PlayStation 5 exclusive of the year. Really enjoyable. You know what you're getting. It's more of the same, but what can I say? What a fun game. That's Spider-Man 2. Next up is a game that I've been wanting to get for a little while. Um, it's been a little bit pricey and then it did pop down in the Amazon sale. And it's an Amazon exclusive edition of Assassin's Creed Mirage. This is a launch edition which includes the game and some additional content. You get some bonus DLC with it. And you also do get like posters and um, lithographs inside this. So if you just give us a second... You do get some art cards here, and you also do get a poster of the map, so that's pretty cool. So you do get a poster of the map, um, some lithographs, and a bonus quest with it. This one was only 20 quid because you got a bonus £10 off when you uh, picked it up from an Amazon collect point. But for some reason it got delivered to my house, so it wasn't too bad. So that's Assassin's Creed Mirage. Next up is another collector's edition for PS5, and this one went down to 7 quid on the game collection. Always wanted to play this on PS4, but it got a special edition on PS5, and I didn't realise it was a big box set. And that's Greedfall. It looks like it's going to be like a traditional RPG set in sort of like a Game of Thrones-esque universe. I've heard it's a double A game, but it's got a lot of charm to it, and it's really, really original and a lot of fun. Uh, this one includes the base game, the DLC, some lithographs, posters and a sticker sheet so quite a packed little release for only seven quid so be sure to check out the game collection for that one and the final thing is another collector's edition and uh i've been wanting to play this game for a little while and i really prefer to get this set and the set did go down in the sale um mid-october and for 35 quid i picked up dead island 2 with the shark yeah you get a free shark with this and the shark sold it for me. I played a little bit of Dead Island 2 and it's a lot of fun. I do think it's a lot better than Dying Light 2 which I was actually really disappointed with. This one just seems to be silly over the top and it knows what it's aiming for. And I'm so glad it actually turned out to be good. Because this game had been in development how long was going to be released 
well, it was announced about 10 years ago. So at least it's finally come out and it's actually really quite good. But here it is. Here's the chap I've been dying to show off. It's uh, the shark. Yay! It's got his little sunglasses. It's really cool and yeah, very happy to get this in the collection. Yeah, I don't I don't know whether the shark has a big um impact in the game. Probably just some advertisement in the game, but I like him. He's a cool addition to the collection. So that's Dead Island Two. So yeah, that's everything I picked up over the past month and a bit, video game wise, and quite a lot I picked up and quite a lot to play. And wow, some great bargains there and some great games. So just to recap, this is what I got. I got the Dead Island 2 with the shark, Greedfall, Gold Edition, Assassin's Creed Mirage, Spider-Man 2, Nickelodeon Kart Racers 3, Goat Simulator 3, Lego 2K Drive, Forspoken, Biomutant, Mega Solid Collection Volume 1, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, Red Dead Redemption, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, Super Mario Bros. RPG, Sonic Superstars, Disney Illusion Island, and Pikmin 1 and 2. So, a lot of great games there. So, thanks ever so much everybody for watching. Tell me what games you're currently playing at the moment and what video games you've picked up. It'd be great to chat to you about all things video games in the comments section down below. So thanks ever so much for taking your time watching my video. I really do appreciate it. You stay safe, take care, and I'll see you all on the next video. Bye.